Well, I'm, uh, I'm Jim White from Domain Chandon. I'm the vineyard manager here. Um, I look after uh, both our 100 acre vineyard on site and uh, we've got a surrounding um, property around the vineyard and, and we've got about 180 acres of floodplains. Uh, on those 180 acres we've got about 3 kilometres of Yarra River frontage and about 1.5 kilometres of um, the Yeringberg Creek frontage. So we actually have quite a, a, a deal of waterways on the property. Um, although they're quite separated from our, our tourist business up here, um, they're quite an important uh, part of our, of our property. Um, I've, my family has, and I've found this out at later stages, but my family has actually been involved in grape growing in Australia um, 130 years ago, and then we've had family who've, who've actually managed properties out here during squatters' times when it would have been in, it, in its fairly natural state. And I guess I've, I always um, look at the, the state of, uh, uh, of the environment and how, how um, the land clearing has significantly changed both the landscape and, and the, the uses of the land. And I just think that, I guess, I always like to find a, strike a balance between agricultural production and maintaining the altered but, but I guess it, natural environment as much as possible. Now if you go down just before this yellow pole lying on the ground here, turn left, yep. drive through this car park. Certainly the example was set for me within the company when they, when they first moved here 20 years ago. Um, I guess one of the major projects was to revegetate as much of the, the Yarra River Bank as, as possible and, and that's now come to fruition in, I guess, in a, in a fairly, fairly well um, and developed and, and maintained state. Um, and again, we, we take, I guess, we take water from out of the river. So again, we rely on the river for a lot of our resources here, um, not only the natural resources but also um, those agricultural inputs such as water. And always looking at the fact that what we do up here affects everyone downstream and what everyone upstream, uh, upstream from us affects us as well. Um, so really I guess it's that mutual benefit that we all get as, as river users and as, and as, as a residents of the catchment. Um, in the end we've all got, uh, there's some requirement on us to protect our own little patch because I can only protect this much but together as a group and, and with, um, with, I guess, uh, linkages between different groups and, and different land, landowners and managers, um, we can actually make a significant difference to, to the state of the rivers. The experience of, with the, the two birds of prey um, going claw to claw in battle above me, totally oblivious to what I was doing and, and, uh, and that, I guess, provided one of those really inspirational moments when you suddenly realise all this hard work that you've done and all this time and, and planning and stuff that you've put into the project is actually, you know, these are some of the benefits that you're going to get. Actually drawing it down like this, um, drawing it out is actually the best way to get rid of mosquito oh, fish, okay. at, least, yep. at least temporarily. And, and for us, coming from a large tourist facility, we can just nick down and be two minutes down, down in the paddock and you may as well be in a different planet, it's fantastic. I guess our main thing is going to be letting it seed out for a yep. year or two, mm -hmm. um, just turning as much of that seed back Well, in. some rain would help. <laughs> um, and looking at, I guess, you know, we, we call it a floodplain, but you know, nowadays with our, with our impoundments on the rivers, um, we just don't get the natural flows that we do and I, I guess I'd love to see some sort of return to the natural flooding regime that these floodplains we're getting and I guess we expect that to then invigorate all the billabongs and all the other the systems um, that surround the river as well. That would be nice. Um, I guess I'd love to have uh, no foxes and some small mammalian creatures around. I'd love to be able to have, you know, go down to the river and, and find bandicoot populations and, and antichinus running around and those sorts of things that again are almost irreplaceable in today's society with today's uh, feral species. But I guess that would be a, another magnificent thing. And the third wish, I'm, oh, I can't think of a third wish. If I could have those two, I'd be pretty happy.